Hi, everybody. Welcome to our webinar, How 10th Street Safety Management Makes Your Job Easier. Come see what's new. I'm Molly Fiddler, and I'm here with Marilyn Serber and Elizabeth Sontag. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to join us. We are very excited to show you what's new in safety management. Today's webinar will cover our entire interconnected safety solution from Clearinghouse to CSA, diving into our four newest features designed to enhance your safety management experience. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and sent to you within the next 24 hours, so don't worry if you get interrupted or have to jump off the call. You'll get the recording sent to your email address tomorrow so you can review it at your convenience. Additionally, please submit your questions at any time throughout the presentation. You can do so using the text box under the questions section in your GoToWebinar panel. We'll answer as many as we can during our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Also, don't forget to take a look at the handout section in your panel as well. This is where you'll find a few docu documents covering the features that we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic over to Marilyn so she can walk you through today's agenda. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Thursday afternoon. We are going to talk about a lot today. Um, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about safety management and kind of what it looks like out in the market today. And how does it look? How can it be better with 10th Street? And how did we get here? What problems are we solving and how do we get there? And how are how is that going to help you build a valid and defensible safety program right um, we're going to talk about safety management and the use of driver pulse um, the problem that we're solving we have some new features um, some exciting new stuff to really complete that life cycle um, elizabeth is going to do an amazing um, demo for us and then we also have a tier breakdown we have um, divided the services into tiers, you know, to make it easily digestible and consumable for you guys. And we're going to go through what that looks like. And then, as always, save some time for question and answers. So, as Molly said, please put your questions in. Um, we would love, we love the interaction. Next slide, please, Molly. So, safety. So, what is the problem today for safety management, right? I will date myself and say I joined the trucking industry in 2008 um, as a driver recruiter. And so, our space looks a lot different now than it did in 2008. And that's a good thing, right? It's evolved and we know it's going to continue to evolve. What we've seen happen in the last three to five years is we've seen um, as such an increased adoption, right, in technology and all of these data points, which is great. It's great that we have all of this information. And so now the problem becomes, where do we put that information? So if we have all of this information, where do we go to get it? And then how do we actually do anything with it? If it's in four or five different systems, spreadsheets, different places. Um, maybe you have access to everything, maybe you don't, and you're trying to piecemeal things together. That is the problem that we see, um, uh, see in the market, right? You're manually entering CSA details, you have to log into a telematics platform and manually maybe enter that information and log it somewhere else so that you can respond and coach the driver or train to the driver. Maybe you're still receiving faxes or emails um, from drivers, um, you know, without a streamlined process, right? You just have documents coming in to general inboxes and, you know, what do you do with those? How do you make sure they don't get missed? How do you look at past events? How do you start to see the entire picture of a driver, right? How do you review their training? And how do you say, what other things am I maybe not thinking about, right? And so we came up, you know, with our we have a unique position right with an interconnected solution and the reason that it's so unique um with what we have at 10 street is because we are helping you gather your information from the very very beginning of the process right and that is providing a place for you to gather all of this information to make all of these decisions all the way through the life cycle of the driver and what has also evolved in our industry is that we can no longer make um decisions about drivers without looking at the whole picture, right? When we pick up the phone to coach or counsel a driver or terminate a driver or try to retain a driver or do a driver survey or dispatch a driver or whatever that phone call is, um, you know, we need, we have to understand who we're calling, especially if 
you know, it's in a safety sensitive manner, right? Um, the other thing that we have learned and we know is that from a retention standpoint, right, you have to also take a driver's safety into consideration. So again, where are you gathering that information so that you have the visibility to see it? Next slide, please, Molly. And that is where we got to, right, is take that framework. And so how does it work at 10th Street? It just gets simpler, right? We solve the problem with a single point of entry and data consolidation, giving total visibility into a driver's full history. And again, we're starting gathering that information in the recruiting process, right? Safety and retention both start in recruiting right? The culture that your company has around safety and how drivers walk into your building feeling about the safety program and the safety culture of your organization absolutely starts in the recruiting department, right? In addition, during that recruiting process, you're starting to build um, a lot of these documents, right? So, you may not know it yet, but you are making it easier on yourself in an interconnected system where everything is in one place and the fact that it's interconnected provides some workflow and automation options that frankly just don't exist, right, without interconnected data. And so our goal for you, right, is to use our platform to manage this entire life cycle of your driver, starting in the beginning, right, in recruiting. You start gathering all the information and that follows the driver through to safety, right? We have integrated um, in, with a bunch of telematics company so that you can evaluate that information. We have the ability for you to track equipment now in our system and assign, you know, some equipment to drivers in the system. We have a full CSA integration and a DQF management. We have a full driver management system, which allows you to manage the accidents, violations, workers comp, claims, those types of things. We have the full training and coaching um, so you can document that, you can assign training to the driver. And so you're gathering all of that information, right, in 10th Street. So that starts to tell you, okay, look, I have gathered all of this. Now I can look at it and I can say, what do I need to do with it? And also, by the way, you know, with our, you know, with the complement of stay metrics, right? We also have the potential for you to engage and retain drivers with surveys, whether that's because of a safety related event or something else, but you still have all of the information at your fingertips. And gathering it that way allows you to evaluate the information, right, in a comprehensive way. And I would ask you today, right, how do you evaluate that information? How many places do you have to go to to gather all of these these things about a driver before you know when there's an accident um, when you need to term a driver when you have to route them in you know how many different places do you have to go how many different logins do you have to have to get into those systems and you know can you access it at any time right um, my experience in safety tells me that we don't always need to access documents at two o'clock on a tuesday afternoon right a lot of times we are having to have access to things um, at all different times of day and night, um, because that's, you know, trucking doesn't stop. It's always going. And so where are you keeping these things? If you're keeping it in a filing cabinet, right, then you're just not prepared um, to act in a, in a quick manner. Um, so gathering it all in this place allows you to evaluate it, right? What is the state of this driver as a whole? Have they taken any surveys? What did they come to us with? You know, how do we look at all this? What kind of truck do they have? If you, you know, if you start using that piece, it's like there's just so much to gather and to evaluate and say, how do we want to handle this driver? What do we need to do? Do we want to retain them? Do we need to term them? Do they need a survey? Do they, you know, what do they need? You have to have a way to evaluate that. And how do you do that now, right? How many different places do you go? And then how do you act? So if you um, are gathering all of this information and you are evaluating it in all these different places, then where do you go, right, to actually act on it and say, what are we going to do with this driver and how do we do it and where do we do it? And then, by the way, how do we document that? Right? So I'd ask yourselves too, how do you know that these things are being done, that this action is actually happening in your company and how are you documenting it today? 
that's the action part. And that is, again, a differentiator um, with the 10 Street solution for you to be able to do all of these things in one place. Again, the interconnectivity of the information also, again, just allows workflow and automation that's just not possible when the solution isn't interconnected. The, the last piece of this is to close the loop, right? The real world is messy and things usually happen in different sequences. There's a bunch of different steps, right, that may be decoupled. Safety managers can cycle through them, you know, as often as circumstances dictate, right? So when the CSA comes in several days after the fact, the data can be reviewed in the proper context and the repairs are estimated and billed, they can manage those claims and leverage the same gather, evaluate, and act tools to get those claims paid, right? In addition, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about driver pulse, but when you are thinking about all of the different places that you are going to get access information, I want you to also ask yourself, how many different places are you asking your drivers to go? to submit information to you or to consume information from you because there's only so many calls to actions that we can expect drivers to follow, right? Their primary duty is picking up and delivering freight on time and safely. And that's what we want them to focus on. So let's make their life as easy as possible too, right? By having one place for them to go to get information. So again, what are we doing? What are we doing with 10th Street? Safety management, we are gathering data, evaluating data, acting on those data points and closing the loop in one place with one login for you, the safety manager, and also for the driver. Um, next slide, please, Molly. And so why is that so important that you be able to gather, evaluate, act, close the loop, and you know provide visibility? Because this is what you need to do um, to build a valid and defensible safety program, right? To protect you against nuclear verdicts. Over the last five years, the adult, they, excuse me, the average settlement for FCSA non-compliance case hits carriers at an average of $7,000, while out of control nuclear verdicts rose from 2 million to 22 million in just 10 years. That's from freight waves and transflow, right? To reduce costs and protect your company from these types of risks, you have to have full visibility into a driver's history, not just the limited window, right? You also have to be able to show what are you doing with all of these data points. You have to, you know, you're getting this data. If you're not evaluating it and acting on it in any way, that is worse, right? To have data that you're not doing anything with. Because if you have in your possession, you know, the evidence that a driver is going to have a, a really bad accident and you haven't done anything, then that's not good, right? And so building a process in an interconnected system that allows you to do that and allows you to measure whether it's being done. So you're thinking about what you're doing right now from a process standpoint. How do you make sure that gets done every time? I mean, you're probably getting data from at least three or four different places, right, about a driver. And so how do you make sure all of that data is consumed by the appropriate person and acted on appropriately? And then how do you convince your insurance company or uh, a defense attorney, right, that, that you are able, that you are doing that, right? So this cohesive program, it just helps you do a lot of things. It helps you reduce your accidents per mile. It decreases your risk out there. It helps you defend against lawsuits and prevent nuclear verdicts, as well as lowering your insurance premium premiums. You know, most, I think most of us, you know, you have to provide, you know, all of your safety program information every year at your insurance renewal, right? And so what does that look like when you go to renewal and say, hey, here's my plan. And, you know, oh, by the way, I can give you limited access to this or specific access to this so that you can go in and see what's happening. These are the reports. This is how we measure it. This is how we know when something isn't going well. And this is what we do to, to fix it. And show that you have put a program in place that is interconnected, that allows you to gather, evaluate, act, and close the loop, right? And continue to follow up, again, with the surveys from the retention piece. You know, you get to continue to follow up with that driver to say, to make sure that they stay happy and that they stay safe at your company. Um, next slide, please, Molly. 
So safety management and driver pulse. Why is this so important? Um, it's important because, you know, drivers have a lot of things to do. They just do. And give it, sending my experience at a trucking company tells me sending me the paperwork that I need is not usually at the top of their list, right? And things that they're worried about in their day. Or maybe it is, but they don't understand how to get it to you or know where to go, or they're just confused because there's so many different places to go. And so that's where safety management and driver pulse comes in, right? Meet drivers where they already live. 75% of drivers are already using driving driver pulse. And if you're using driver pulse for recruiting, onboarding, retention, and safety management, think about that. Think about the power of that, right? Just from a call to action for driver's standpoint, if they know they're going to this one place, they're used to going there. They already have information saved there. Um, and then think about the, how easily they can share that. They can take pictures of reports and send them to you, of documents and send them to you. You can request documents that way. Um, we know, right, that we get a better response from an app you know, from through the Pulse app with drivers than if you just send an email or a text, because this is where drivers are going, you know, to manage that part of their job. And so how do you make sure that continues in your post hire solution? With driver Pulse and with this complete solution, you can easily assign training, conduct virtual coaching and communicate with drivers from one platform for you and then from that one app for the driver. Next slide, please, Molly. So what are we doing? This is solving the problem, right? We're solving the problem. Using the power of Pulse, telematics integration, CSA and Express, accident and incident entry, we're able to gather all the relevant safety data about safety events, accidents, incidents, et cetera, into one place. Then we're evaluating, we take the gathered set of information about an event and allow safety managers a good way to, ev to evaluate in light of other information about the driver. How many points did they already have? What's the state of their DQF? How many accidents did they have when they applied? How much training have they already complete completed, et cetera? And act with all the facts on the table and in the proper context, the gather and evaluate processes, right? Now the carrier can act. You can enroll a driver in remedial training, document a coaching conversation, assign points to the event, notify others in the company by leveraging our workflow system and all of its capabilities. You know, you can have a live in, you know, coaching, you know, with the person right there through your 10 Street dashboard. And then you can close the loop, right? You can let, you can go back and make sure you have all of the data, make sure that everything has been linked, right? And set, put all together and close the loop to make sure you've actually acted on things, right? And then further, you know, with closing the loop, if there's stuff that has to go, information to go back to the driver, you know, you can close the loop and let the driver know what's done, right? Again, that is managing that entire life cycle of that driver. And that's putting the driver's mind at ease, right? When you close the loop with the driver to let them know so, hey, this has been received, this has been, you know, we're doing this, um, then the driver can focus on, you know, continuing to drive, you know, on drive up and down the road safely and deliver freight on time and damage free, right? Which is what we need drivers to do. Um, next slide, please, uh, Molly. So what are the new features um, that we have? We've had uh, this, our second safety webinar in the last couple months. And so we have added some stuff, um, which is claims management to help you maintain compliance, manage risk, and enrich the record quality with the ability to capture over 50 different event data points to help your team see the full history, the full story behind any accident, incident, or violation. Our claims management tool helps you improve the documentation and syncs with CSA and telematics data to help you resolve claims with greater ease, right? And all of that is going to be in the bronze tier, which Elizabeth is gonna talk about after our demo. We've also added equipment assignment, which provides a more holistic view by allowing you to link your equipment to subjects and events. Keeping an inventory of your entire fleet in the same place, you manage your drivers and events adds transparency and helps you see the big picture. It doesn't give you the ability to manage the equipment. You must be silver for that, right? For bronze, though, everybody is going to get equipment assignment with bronze. Um, equipment tracking, 
to start you down the road of tracking your equipment in the same place you manage your drivers, your software will decode your VIN numbers to auto-populate fields such as year, make, model, engine size, country of origin, and more. Assign drivers, attach equipment-related documents, apply tags, sync with related events such as CSA and telematics data, and add notes to capture the full story of each asset. And that's gonna be in our silver packages. And then finally, we have equipment files management to help you better manage the documents of your trucks, alerting you when critical equipment documents such as insurance um, inspections and 2290s are missing or expired. But we know, you know that just like files are required for your drivers, you also need to have update documentation on your equipment. And we now are providing that. I think we're calling it, you know, EQF, right? Um, and that's going to be in your silver package. So um, we have talked about a lot of things. And so again, Miss, the one and only Miss Sontag is going to start our demo. And as she's going through the demo, think about where are you doing these things now? And where, where are you doing them if you are? How many different places? And then what are you asking your drivers to do in response and how many different places do they have to go? And think about how having this interconnected solution can really just change your life, right? Um, so with that, with that, I will turn it over to Elizabeth to show us the demo. Elizabeth, I'm gonna go ahead and make you the presenter now. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Molly. I'm going to All right, it shows that my screen is sharing with you guys, so we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you how to kind of cover those four things that Marilyn had talked about. The gather, the evaluate, the take action, and the close the loop. With the gather, you can use the powerful telematics integration, CSA, express accidents and incidents entries, and you're able to get all of that safety data to have in one place so that you can kind of gather everything and take a look at everything. And with that new, you can also assign trucks and trailers that were involved in specific events. When you look at evaluate, what we're gonna see is we're gonna take the time and we're gonna gather, we're gonna take all the gathered information and then we're gonna look at the event and we're gonna look at the history of the driver. We can see the pre-hire information, the post-hire information. What's the state of their DQF? How many accidents did they have when they applied? How much training have they all already completed? Um, and we can view that accident and incident history right in the system. Next, with the take action, after we've looked at everything, we've gathered everything, we've evaluated everything, we can enroll our driver in training. We can assign documents um, for coaching forms, coaching conversations, assign points to events, notify other people in the company, and leverage the workflow um, that is available in the system to kind of help you to take action. And then finally, closing that loop. So really taking all of that information and managing it. You know, something that happens doesn't get completed in one day. There's many other things that happened on the road. You need to get repair estimates. You also want to make sure that you're taking a look at everything to see if your CSA matches. You know, it comes in several days later, and you just want to make sure you get a copy of that police report. You can have the driver submit all of that stuff through Pulse. So really working on being able to pull in and leverage the gather, the evaluate, the act tools, and get those claims paid. And with the new functions, you can use the new events tool to kind of help you manage those events, see what status is there in, take a look at everything in whole, and see what needs to be completed for each one of those. So we're gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about our friend Andy. So we get a call and say, hey, Andy's had an accident. And so what we can do is with the new safety management, you have a safety management view. And that safety management view will give you a view of all of the events that have happened over that life, over the life of the driver. So you can say, show me activity feed for the last 30, 60, and 90 days, or all time. You can also see higher dates, different information about each kind of section of their safety. So when we have Andy call in and they say they've had an accident, they ran over a mailbox, so we need to go in and add that event. So we're gonna go right to update info and we're gonna click on update info. And many of us are very used to update info to update for post hire events. So we may be adding employment for the driver, but now what you'll see is the first 30 days that they're hired, you'll have two options. You can do pre hire and post hire. So when we go into the post hire option, it gives us information to update that is um, is things that we'll need after Andy's hired. We can update their personal information. 
We can add different driver's license if they've moved or had a change to their driver's license. We can add accidents, incidents, and violations right here. We can also assign truck and trailers. So if we have a truck that we want to assign to Andy, we can come right down here where it says tractor, and we can type in information. It's going to give us a list of trucks that are currently in the system, and so we can select from that drop-down, or if we need to enter additional information because we don't see our truck, we can keep adding, and it allows to create new equipment. So we're going to go ahead and create a new truck. It's going to open up our window for us, and it's going to allow us to enter in the information. So we can enter in the number, the truck number, and then we can enter in the plate. And then we can say, where is that plate located? It's in Oklahoma. And then we can enter in the make and the model. And what you'll see is that there are three fields that are required. It's required us to enter in the unit ID, the type, and the status. All of the other are optional. So once we've got that, we can go ahead and save that information, and it's going to assign that truck to Andy. So now we have assigned our tractor to Andy. And we can go in, and we can also update any accidents. So when we go into the accident information, it will show us any accidents that have been entered post-hire. So we can come in and we can click on Add a New Accident, and this will allow us to enter in the information for Andy. Um, one of the new fields are the new fields. We've actually added about 50 new fields that allow you to really kind of manage this claim. So you can put in the date and time of the accident, the accident type, the country, and then the address where the event happened. And we're gonna put in that it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the zip code. We've got a status, so we're gonna open this one up. We're gonna start it with the status of opened. We can assign the points for that. And then we can get into each one of these details. So with these different fields that have been added, it allows you to manage the claim. So you can go in and you can enter in as much or as little information as you would like. These fields are standard and not customizable. But with that, I will say that the accident class can be customized. This is the drop down that can be customized for the different types of class. Um, so you can say, you know, different types of accidents where A hit B, B hit A, different things like that you can put in your accident class. You've got claim numbers and different things in your accident details. And then you can pop over to your road conditions if there were any third party vehicles, and then your cost. So you could put in estimated costs and final costs for any accident that happens in the system. So when we come over here, we'll just fill in a couple for these fields. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the accident, and then we're gonna finalize our changes. So just like when you updated info in the past, you're gonna add and then finalize, and then that has been completed. So now we have successfully added the information into the system. So we've got our accident in, and now we can kind of manage it. So when you put points in for an accident, you can customize those points to be anything that you would like. You know, you may put a scale of one to 10, you may decide to do a different type of scale, but those points will be added to that accident. And then those points will decay like a CSA. So it, over time, those points will reduce as the accident ages in the system. So we've got our accident. We've got our information. Now we're going to start to gather. And so we're going to gather additional information about this event. So we want to go into our safety management, and we're going to go into our events. And down here, what we'll see is we've got our pre-hire events, we've got our hire date, and then we've got our post-hire events. And here's the accidents that I've entered in, so I'm going to click on it, and it's going to open up the events details. Now what I want to do is I want to request information from Andy. So I'm going to ask Andy if they can send me over photos of the damage. About 75% of the drivers are already using polls or have it on their phone. And so they can go and actually request those documents from that driver. So you can go to Documents and Add Documents, Pulse Documents, and then in here we can select our option to be able to send over the request. I apologize, my Wi-Fi is a little slow today, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. All right, so we can say, please send the accident. Okay, and we're going to send our request. So that's going to buzz Andy's pocket. They're going to get the request through Pulse. And then they will be able to actually take photos of that accident and send it back. So as a user, you'll get a notification that says, hey, 
these photos have arrived, let's take a look at them, and then we can upload those and add them into the Documents tab. We can also go right in and add any documents. So if I have come um, and I've got, I received a copy of a police report, I can come in here and I can upload those documents and these documents will be attached to these, this specific event. So I can go in here and pull my police report. I'm gonna upload that in and save those documents. Now what we're doing is we're gathering that information. So we're looking for uploaded photos. We're looking for police reports. We're getting all of that information in and gathering it and putting it in one place. Attaching it to that event so that we know exactly what's going on and we can take a look at it as a whole and we have all of our documents there. Okay. Now, if you have an integration with CSA or telematics, you can also add those events and link those events too. So I can come into telematics and I can click on link telematics events. It will show me all of the telematics events that have been recorded for Andy. And I can go ahead and click this little link button and it will add that telematics event into this accident. So now I've successfully linked it, and when I go back, I can really see that I've got my telematics, I can play the video, I've got my CFA events, I've got all of my documents and my equipment that may be attached. Looks like we didn't attach any equipment, so what I can do is I can go up and click on Edit Details. And when I edit my details, it's going to allow me to put in any information I receive. So maybe you don't have all of the data on the accident and you need to go back and add some additional information you can come in and add these different fields as you get the information. But I wanna make sure I add my truck number. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my truck number and it's gonna pull all of the equipment that matches. So when I put in my numbers, I'm gonna say, oh, yep, this was the truck they were driving and this was the trailer they were driving. And that will then link that piece of equipment to this event as well. So now I have linked and I've gathered my photos, my police report, I've, tried, I've um, linked my equipment to it, and everything is now kind of, kind of all together and gathering in one place. So now I'm going to update my accent, finalize my changes, and that's going to get us back over to our events details. Okay. So now we've kind of talked through how we have managed the process to go ahead and log that accident, start to gather that information, and take a look at it. So once we get everything in, we can see all of the history in one place. So we're going to go back to our subject view and see in an overview that now we've gathered and now we can really kind of evaluate. So we need to make a decision. So we go to our subject view and we can see everything that all of the data, all of the history in one place. I can see anything from any patterns. I can dig into each event specifically, if it's a CSA event or if it's a telematics event. I can see all of that and really drill in. I can look at the DQF and see how compliant I am if I need to make sure I have anything that's missing or expired. I can also look at the CSA so that I can see any past violations, past violations over the last 90 days or total violations all in one place. If I go to my events tab, I can see pre and post hire accidents. So again, taking a look and seeing what happened before they were hired. Here's when they were hired and now what's happened since they've been hired. And then I can go over into driver task as well and I can see what kind of training has Andy completed in the past. So really being able to take all of that information that we've gathered and then evaluate the history. So I can take a whole look at it and say, okay, what's the next step? What do I need to do next to kind of get to, the, to, to have that conversation with Andy? So I've evaluated my information and I'm gonna call Andy for a coaching session. So I'm gonna go back over to my event and when I go back over to my event, I wanna log what I've done for this. So I can go right in and click into my event. And when I see this, I can take a look at the status. I can change it. I can review all of my linked events, but then I wanna run a process. I wanna say, hey, I went ahead and called Andy and we talked about them. Um, we talked about a backing refresher and just kind of taking a, taking a look at that and just taking the training. Also letting Andy know, that if there's one more event that occurs, they could be terminated for this. So I really wanna go in and document that information. So I'm gonna go into my processes. Everyone will have access to the safety warning acknowledgement. I can start that process and that will create a form. So after I've had that phone call, I can document that training, document that conversation and send that information over to Andy so we can make sure that it's been documented 
it's stored into the accident. So if there's anything that comes up, we can show that show that information that we are we have completed that training and we are working on the backing with Andy. So I can come in, I can fill out the form. It puts Andy's name in, the date and time, and then a summary of coaching. So I can type in an explanation of what I talked to Andy about and then sign the document. Go ahead and save the document and that will then send a copy to Andy for them to sign as well. So it will come back into the system so you have that information. I next wanna come in and I wanna go ahead and schedule that backing class. So I'm gonna go in and start that process as well. And I'm gonna send that training out to Andy so that they also have the backing training. So I have gathered the information, I've evaluated the information, and now I have taken action. So I've counseled Andy and also sent them some training so that they can um, review the backing safety and work from there. Okay, so now we have completed that and what we're ready to do is we're ready to close the loop. So when we're looking at closing the loop, we are you know, waiting a few days later to see if that CSA event comes in. If that CSA event comes in, we wanna go ahead and link it in and make sure that that information matches what we have. Did we get a copy of the inspection report? Did we get the information in? Does it all look correct? So we can really kind of take a look at that, make sure it all matches. Um, we can make sure that we have repair estimates. We wanna know, you know, have the repairs been completed? Have all of those claims been paid? that data has come in and we can manage that claim and being able to make sure that if we're missing any information, we can go ahead and click that, or we can go ahead and add that in and we can compare estimates to real cost of the accident and just make sure that everything has been paid. So all of that information can be stored here. We have a new tool in the system that allows you to manage all of your open events. So when you go to tools and then you go over to your safety management, And I apologize, my Wi-Fi is a little testy today. <laughs> there we go. So we're in our safety management. And here we're going to have our events tool. So our events tool is going to help us to manage. We have filters where we can filter by different types of events. So I can see, you know, actions only, incidents only, violations. Then all the different statuses that we have, because statuses are customizable for accidents, incidents, and violations. And then we can say a date range. I want to see everything from the first of the month to now. And if I choose, I can filter by work list as well. Then I'll give a refresh, and it's going to show me all of those open claims, open accidents, all of that information, and I can really review what have I got, what has received, what has come in. I've got my accident, it's in an open status, the date the accident occurred, the truck number, the claim number, estimated cost, and number of points to the driver. So I can see that information, and as it comes through, you know, two weeks have passed, the mailbox has been fixed. We can come in here and we can say, all right, Andy hit the mailbox. We need to go ahead and click into Andy, make sure that we're entering in that information. We've got our final information about our accident and we can come in and we can put final documentation right here into the documents. So it's gonna pull us over to that event. It's gonna open it up for us. And then we are able to manage that event and take the time to make sure that we've closed that loop. Do we have all of those documents in? Have we linked everything for telematics and CSA? If everything looks good, then we can change that status. We can say, okay, we are good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna change the status. So now we know um, that everything has been completed. Okay, and remembering those points, they stay even if the event has been closed and those points do age as, um, as the accident gets older. So the points do reduce as time goes by. All right, so what do we do? What do we do next? Well, guess what? The next day, I get a call from Andy and they have hit another mailbox. So we're gonna go ahead and unfortunately, we're gonna terminate Andy. So we're gonna go back over to our work list and we're gonna find Andy's subject. We can then log in our accident, but when we're ready, after we've logged in our accident and gathered our information, we can go ahead and set Andy to a terminated status. So when you're in your when you're in your events here, we can say we're gonna update info and we're gonna update their post hire. And here we're gonna add in that additional accident. We're gonna say this happened today. We've got a non-injury 
So we can enter in the status as open, the point, and then we can go ahead and enter in the information. Okay, so I've entered in my accident. I'm going to go ahead and save my accident and finalize my changes. So now we can kind of start the process again. We can look, we can kind of take our information that we've got, we can gather, evaluate, take action, and close the loop on the new accident. There are reports that are available in safety management as well that will help you to look at those points. So now I can see Andy's in the red with the points. The points that they have from the total accidents have put them over into the red category. So you can see that at the subject level, but also in safety management, you can see it at, at, across your across all drivers. So you can look at all of your drivers and see how many points they have from events that have been logged into the system. So I can come back to tools, I can go to safety management, into my points management, and there I can take that look. So I can take a holistic view of everyone. So let's see if my Wi-Fi will cooperate. We're gonna go right over to our driver points and that's gonna show us here. So now Andy's in the red. I can see all of the other drivers as well and kind of evaluate where they are. I can see the total accident points, incident points, violations, and total points for the drivers. You can set those thresholds for what, change, what kind of sets the driver to red, yellow, or green in the points report. So in the safety management tool, you can, you can manage all of your events, you can manage all of your driver points, and then you also have access to an accident registry. The accident registry will pull over all accidents based on the filters that you enter in, or you can say, just show me only DOT reportable. So that can be refreshed and also exported to a PDF so that you have that information for your accident registry when you need to report that. All right, so going back to Andy Anderson. So we've, we have evaluated the information, we've looked at our points report, we can see Andy's in the red. So now we wanna go ahead and terminate Andy. One of the new features that you have is when you terminate a driver, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you if you wanna enter in a termination record. This is a stored response that you can enter into Exchange. So if you're using Exchange, you can click yes, and you have access to the provider response menu. It will go ahead and open up a add stored response field. And here, you will see that it will enter in Andy's personal information, and it will also add any accidents that Andy has had while they worked for you. So those are already in there for you, so you don't have to key those again. You've got all of your information, and so you can come in here and put their, the date that they left, Today. Sorry, I forgot what year it was there. <laughs> and then you can put in their position, the reason they left, and key in all of that information. You can do the drug and alcohol, you can enter any additional accidents, and then go ahead and submit the response. And that will store it so any employment verifications that you get for Andy in the future, you will be able to, um, it will already have that stored for you so that you can go in and just release that information. Okay, so we've talked about a lot here for safety. So just kind of a recap, we um, have talked about the new functionality to be able to gather, evaluate, and close the loop. And knowing just that a day in the life of a safety is interrupted so much. So this tool gives you an easy way to manage your daily work and use the workflow to send those notifications um, to report on, or if you have 30, third-party integrations to have that data in there as well. A core part of this functionality is going to be free for all of our clients. Even if you're not using DQF, um, you are gonna have access to the bronze package. So primary users will have access to the tool, and in the tool, they can also manage users for, or manage permissions for other users. If you want your um, safety team to have access to the pre and post hire updates, if you want them to have access to the safety management view or the safety management tool. And then you can also manage what tools, what tabs they have access to in the safety management tool. So all of that is able to be managed by a primary user right in the safety management tool. All right. Now just a little bit ago, we did talk about adding equipment to Andy, assigning a piece, a truck or a trailer to Andy, and then also assigning a truck or trailer to an accident. And we've received feedback from our beta testers that they wanted to track more. So they wanted to be able to track more information on their equipment. So um, with the silver package, if you decide to upgrade, 
you will have a manage, uh, be able to manage all of your equipment and do equipment tracking. So in the top corner where I have Express, I now have an option for equipment. And so we're excited to introduce that you'll have a way in the dashboard that gives you the ability to enter in all of your trucks and your trailers. And then you can, of course, assign that truck or trailer to an accident or an incident. Um, and then you'll also be able to track that file equipment for anything that's missing or expired. So you, if you need to gather plate numbers, if you need to gather registrations, 2290s, anything like that, you can track all of that information. So really making the dashboard even more of a one-stop shop to manage your claims and also manage your fleet. So when you pop into equipment, <clears throat> you have some additional options in here. Um, what you're going to see is that you can give user specific, you can give specific users access to the equipment to manage those trucks and trailers. You'll have a home page. Um, this home page will give you information about claims that have been entered, your average age of your equipment, how compliant is your equipment, what's missing or expired, um, the equipment status. Are, are your trucks in service? Are they out of service? You can see the difference in those. And where are your trucks located? What is the equipment location? So you can see all of that on the home page. Um, if I go over to list, list allows me to manage my equipment. So I can see I've got all of my trucks and trailers here. I can filter by my trucks and my trailers. I can filter by my status, which is customizable. I can also filter based on my location. And then it will show me all of the trucks and trailers that match the information I enter as the filters. Or I can use the search here if I'm looking for a specific truck number, and I can enter in the information and it will pull the trucks back that match. So looking at all of the trucks, here's the one that we just entered earlier. So I'm going to click into that, and it lets me manage this piece of equipment. So I can come in and I can change the unit ID. I can change the status. I can change the location. Um, I can put in any additional information here that I would like. I can also add photos of that equipment, and so I can put any kind of information here. If I need to, I can add documents. Um, I can add notes and tagging. So under notes, you can just add notes in about the piece of equipment. Documents, we want to track the different information for what we need. So we have a little polysys top that tells us what's missing. This truck was just added, so we needed to add some information in. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, I have a copy of the insurance, so I want to go ahead and add a document. And I'm going to select the insurance, and then I can select my expiration date, and then I can drag and drop that insurance in. I can save the document, and that will file it into the truck's file. Oops. So I'll file that away, and that information will be stored here. So then I can come in and I can add all of my insurance information, my plates, my tags, all of that stuff. I can also manage the status of the equipment. Is it out of service? Is it in service? Um, what do I need to do for this piece of equipment? I can also manage tags. And so tags are things that are specific to this vehicle. What you'll see is that when you link this piece of equipment to drivers, it will tell you who, the, who it's linked to, who's driving it. And so if you have a piece of equipment um, and you want to have multiple drivers assigned to it, you can do that. So if you have truck one, two, three, four, and you have two drivers that alternate between driving it, you can assign both of those drivers to that truck and it will let you know who's assigned to it. You can also add tags. So you can add, maybe it's a fleet owner, you can add the fleet owner's information. You can add the fleet owner's phone number. And all of these tags can be customized to put in information that's helpful to be able to look at a piece of equipment and anything you would need to reference. So we use tags on the express side and you can also use tags right here on the equipment side as well. So here you can manage your equipment. You can add and update any trucks or trailers that you have in the system. You also have a search option. So search works just like it does on Express. You can search by all of the different fields and equipment. And you can also use tag search. So when you're using tag search, you can look for specific tags that you have set up to be able to filter those. And then the final thing that you have access to is tools. And tools is going to show you you're missing and expired information for specific trucks. So I have all of the filters. I can see missing or expired, missing and expired, date ranges for missing documents, the statuses, I can look by location, a specific file type, or tags that I want to include. And once I refresh that information, it shows me the unit ID, the plate, the VIN, the make, the model, and then what's missing or expired are present. 
So I can see the X means it's missing, check marks mean that it's present, and yellow means it's about to expire. So I can take a look at this report and see, in an overview, what's missing, what's expired, what do I need to gather? So this tool will allow you to kind of see equipment on a whole and then gather all of that information and those documents so that everything comes back in the system and you're able to track everything in one place. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Molly. And we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the different tiers and kind of what, what we can do or um, what the different options are for you when you're looking at safety. So our bronze tier is available for all primary users. This was turned on this morning. So if you're a primary user, you can go right in and see this information. You've got access to the safety management view. You have access to add claim management. So you can add accidents, incidents, and violations for higher drivers. You have access to the accident registry, which was the report that we saw in the safety management tool. You also have access to the points management tool, also in safety management. You can manage when a driver is terminated and add those storage responses in. And then you can assign equipment to a driver at a, um, at a driver level, or you can assign equipment at an accident, incident, and violation. And remember, you can add those in um, in the express side. So you can kind of manage your equipment on that side by assigning those trucks and trailers. So if we go to the next slide, it's gonna talk about our silver tier. So our silver tier includes everything that we just talked about in bronze. Plus, you get access to the complete training library. Um, if you have a telematics, if you'd like to integrate your telematics, we, um, that's included in the silver tier, as well as C CSA training. If you're using MVR monitoring, that can also be used in the silver tier. You also get access to enhanced CQS, enhanced claims management, which means that you can customize statuses. You can customize different training courses or um, different training documents, coaching documents that need to be sent out to drivers. You can kind of manage all of that. Um, you get equipment tracking, which is what we just saw. And then you get equipment tracking management, which allows you to see any documents that are missing or expired for a piece of equipment. All right. And then the last tier is the gold tier. And the gold tier includes our custom CSA integration, which allows you to manage um, different types of content that you may want to send out when a CSA violation is recorded. And you also get access to driver management. So with gold, you get everything bronze, everything silver, and then you also get the CSA and the driver management included. All right. Molly, I will turn it over to you for any questions. Yes, it looks like Marilyn has been on fire in here answering questions, but I do have a few. Um, one was when you assign a training to a driver, how are you notified when that training is completed? So in the driver task, there is an option where you can see all of the training that has been completed or is still pending. Um, when you schedule training, you also have an option to check if you want to be notified when it's complete. Um, if it is a CSA training that goes out, there's a focus widget as well that can uh, help you to monitor what, what courses have been completed and what courses have been sent out based on a CSA violation. And then it looks like Marilyn answered this question, but just so everyone can hear the answer. If you ask a driver to submit documents, are you able to provide the documents and have them fill it out in the app or would they have to print it out, fill it out and re-upload it? So they can fill that all out in app. So if you request photos, um, they can tap on the notice that comes in and it will open up their camera. So they can just click right away and take photos. Um, if you're sending them the coaching form and saying, hey, we just got off the phone. I just wanted to review what we talked about. That also can be completed in Pulse or um, on the Pulse version web or in the portal. So they can kind of have many different avenues on how to complete those forms. So they don't have to print them at all. They can complete those electronically and then they can come right back into the system. Let's see, sorry, I'm trying to find some questions that Marilyn hasn't answered yet, but she has done a good job. <laughs> um, I did have, there was a way to jump in here, but um, can you talk a little bit, Elizabeth, about 
the claims and how to track like cargo damage and different things like that in the system. Like when the claims, like how, where you, you know, you can, can you make it a cargo claim as well or cargo damage? Put those details. Yeah, I believe whenever, I don't know if it's going I believe under the actual report in, or the accident log, you can, there is a place for cargo damage, and it's an estimate, I believe, under the cost. Sorry, Marilyn, I may not be on the right. No, that, no that's great. That, there was a question about that to make sure there was other types. Um, and then another question is, are the file types for equipment customizable? Yes, they are. Um, in Silver, you can absolutely go through and you can customize that. So if you have different things that you want to track for an accident or an event, um, we can customize those documents so um, you, you can have standard ones like accident report um, photos all of that different stuff but you are those are all customizable to add whatever um, you would want to track in the documents yes <laughs> that's what i thought awesome and so just to verify can the accident section be locked down so that only certain people can add and change accident data yeah so in the user permissions you can have specific users set up. So when you go into your safety management and you go up to the top to configurations, you can actually manage what users have access to what. So you can say, I don't want users to have access to the safety management view or the pre and post hire update. So they'll always have pre hire because that's what we all have. But the post hire is something that you can add to a user to say, this user can access this. Um, and then you could also manage the permissions and the tool within safety management. So you can say users can have access to the events tab or not have access to the events tab. And so you can really take a look at how your users are set up and then evaluate that and say which users need to have permissions to get in there to see that information and which users should not be able to change anything for that. Marilyn, it seems like there's quite a few questions about the telematics integrations. Do you mind telling us the ones we're currently integrated with? Absolutely. So we are currently integrated with Keep Trucking just on the ELD part, because I know that was a question. We don't have camera data from Keep Trucking yet, but we will. Um, we're also integrated with Geotab, and we're integrated with Samsara for both camera and ELD, and then we're integrated with Lytix. And on deck, we have OmniTrack Smart Drive, Netrodyne, um, Teletrack, Navman, and um, Platform Science coming up. So hopefully those will all be in the first quarter. Awesome, thank you. And then on the equipment features, is there any section that can record owner operator contracts or a 1099 detail for owner information? Um, yeah, so you can customize the document types and equipment as well. <clears throat> so if you wanted to add um, for a specific truck or trailer, or well, for all your trucks or trailers, if you wanted to add a file type of a contract or a 1099, you can add that information um, under those file type options. So your account managers would be able to help you to add those document types in so you could upload that information under those pieces of equipment in the system. Awesome, thank you. Marilyn, do you see any more questions? There, we do have a few more. I know it's four o'clock, and so um, we will get all of these out to you. One question we might talk about is, Elizabeth, how long are we seeing right now like to implement safety management? How long would it take for a go live? Yeah, so bronze is live for everyone today. So if you wanna utilize the bronze options with it, you can start to go in and adjust your users and you have access to that immediately. Um, as you upgrade to the different tiers, kind of depending on what options you select, um, the implementation kind of varies based on that information. So if you select DQF and CSA and VR monitoring, then we try to get those turned around as quickly as we can. Um, but those are something that you would work closely with your account manager um, to help get those set up, because um, there's a little bit of work that goes kind of back and forth to get each one of those implemented. Um, but they are fairly quickly, um, to get those set up. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth and Marilyn, and thank you everyone for attending the webinar today. Tomorrow, you will receive a copy of the slide deck as well as a video of the recording of this webinar. So I hope everyone has a great rest of their day, and we look forward to seeing you at a webinar in the future. Thank you, everybody.